guys, welcome to another video for anatomy and physiology. Uh, in this video, uh, actually in a previous video, I discussed the, the inner ear and I went over kind of the surface, um, the general characteristics or the, or the, uh, the, the highlights, if you will, of the, of the inner ear, where I, I basically just pointed out the semicircular canals and, and how they're connected to the vestibule and then how the vestibule is connected to the cochlea. Now what I want to do in this video is that I want to look at those same characteristics, the, these same features in the inner ear, but then we're going to we're going to dive in a little bit more deeper into the actual, um, not just the anatomy, but the physiology of of how how we are, um, how this how, how this organ works basically. And just to kind of summarize it, um, you can basically break it down into uh, the inner ear takes care of two main things. Uh, number one, hearing, which is in your cochlea, and then you have static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. And we'll differentiate dynamic and static equilibrium uh, in a little bit. So what I would like to first start off with is your cochlea, which is your snail-looking aspect of the inner ear. This is the aspect of the ear that takes care of, of hearing. Okay, so how exactly is it that that sound, or, or not sound, but how, well, how is it that the, the mechanical waves of of uh, the pressurized airwaves of sound are created into um, a nervous impulse that goes into the cochlear nerve, uh, cranial nerve number eight, into the brain, and um, so so how is it that that happens? So just to kind of quick little review, so you remember that sound comes into the external acoustic meatus, and that sound, those sound waves create a vibration on your tympanic membrane, your eardrum. So much like a drum, if you kind of visualize a drum kind of uh, oscillating as it uh, as you hit it that oscillation causes an oscillation in the air that's trapped inside of the middle ear. And that oscillation is passed on, that energy is passed on to, as you remember, your malus, okay, and then passed on to your incus, right, your, your incus, your anvil, and then finally your stapes. Now here is where we enter the inner ear at this point. So we're going to remove the stapes, we're going to hide that, and you see right here, this is called the oval window. So this oval window, so the stapes is right here, and it pressurizes, it pushes on the liquid, on the fluid that is inside the cochlea here. And that sound wave, that mechanical sound wave, is transferred into basically a, like a literal wave in a fluid. All right? So, uh, so if you kind of just picture a, um, not just a snail, but a cinnamon roll, uh, you know, a cinnamon roll, you kind of, you know, uh, the way I used to eat them back in the day is I would unroll the cinnamon roll all the way and have this really long um, tube, if you will, and then eat it that way. Well, you know, picture doing that right now because you know uh, when you look at the diagram of a um, of a uh, cochlea, it, it might seem a little bit uh, it, it might seem a little bit confusing. In fact, let, let me go to an image right here real quick. So if you take a cochlea and you unroll it. And let's say you cut it at one point, you slice it, and then you want to look inside of the tube. You're going to see what looks like three different tubes, right? So you're going to have a tube on the top, one in the middle, and then one at the bottom. Now, one thing to consider also is that uh, the cochlea is completely surrounded by bonish, bone, uh, bone tissue, osseous tissue, okay? And that's the bony labyrinth. And inside that labyrinth, you have membranous tissue or you have soft tissue that's inside. So just kind of picture a cave, uh, a cave, a, a cavern that's been cut out. You know, imagine a tunnel being cut out into a mountain and, and the mountain walls are mountain itself. And then the cavern inside is filled with membranous tissue. And that membranous tissue is, we have three different cavities, if you will, three different cavities that, that we're going to discuss. And this is where sound occurs. Now, again, I, I mentioned earlier that I asked you to picture that cinnamon roll being rolled out completely. Now let me show you another image. So this image, if you will, looks, this is essentially the, um, the cochlea, but you know, obviously it's a little bit shorter, but it's essentially giving you the general idea of what it is. Now here you have the stapes. It's important that you pay attention to the stapes here, and then you have the oval window. So again, the stapes will press on that oval window, causing the vibration, causing, causing the wave to be pushed into the liquid, into the fluid that's in the first, in the first cavern. Let me go back to the previous. So that would be this one right here. This is called the scala vestibuli. Okay, that's the top. The scala vestibuli, and then in the middle you have the cochlear duct, and then the scala tympani. Okay, and both of these, 
Both of these contain perilymph. Perilymph, remember the word peri meaning outside, uh, so or outside covering. Uh, so perilymph is on the outside, and that's that's the fluid that, that is in there. And the fluid that's inside of the cochlear duct is called endolymph. Okay, so you have perilymph. So essentially, the sound that fluid goes all the way into the cochlea, and it spins around like the cinnamon roll, and it comes to the the tipping point, and then it just essentially continues. So it's just one continuous tube, and those waves continue all the way out until you hit something called the round window in the, um, in the uh, middle ear. In fact, let me show you where that would, would be located. So this is the oval window. This is the oval window. This is where the, it would start, and it would go into the perilymph, and it would make all its way around, and it would come over here to what's called the cochlear cupula, right? And then it makes its turn, it makes its turn around. And then it, now, actually, the oval, the round window is not shown here. But this is where it would be located right here because imagine for a second let me go back to the previous imagine for a second if that wave that wave would be passed on to this fluid that wave now what if there was no escape then that wave would get bounced back on this wall that wave would get bounced back on this wall and then it would just come back and reverberate and it would essentially get stuck it would get stuck in this in this channel uh, it wouldn't that energy would not be allowed to escape so that energy starts off in the oval window through the stapes it goes to the perilymph all the way around and then it exits the energy itself the liquid the fluid doesn't ex, uh, escape but the energy of that sound wave is allowed to escape through the round window okay so as the oval window as that flap is actuated then this one also is actuated in an inverse an inverse fashion, allowing the energy from that sound wave to escape. Okay, so again, keep in mind that the sound wave, the mechanical energy, is passed on to the perilymph. Okay, now let me show you the. Let's go back to here. So the sound wave is initiated in the perilymph here, and then it comes into contact into what's called the vestibular membrane, and then that is that causes a vibration on this membrane causing the vibration that they to then get passed on to the cochlear duct which is in here it would get passed on to the fluid in here the endolymph now let me let's let's zoom in on this image right here uh, so you can see what what happens at that point all right so we're taking a look at the endolymph now the endolymph this fluid it, it catches the energy from the vestibular membrane and it causes a vibration the vibration is now passed on into the endolymph and then that vibration gets passed on to this particular organ right here. And now we're about to highlight this section right here. All right, so this is the organ of Corti that we're looking at right here. So, so this was your scala vestibuli, your cochlear duct, and your scala tympani. Right, so the energy is now passed on to, to the vestibular membrane, okay, into your endolymph, and then here what's called a tectoral membrane. Now this tectoral membrane, let's zoom in here so you can see what's going on here. As you notice here, this tectoral membrane, there, there are this blue section here, these are called hair cells. Okay, these are outer hair, hair cells, stereocilii. Now they're not actually hair, right? Um, they're actually more resemble more neurons than anything. So this tectoral membrane will vibrate, right? So it catches the sound wave and this will cause a vibration on the tectoral membrane and it slightly grazes on these hairs and these hairs depending on the frequency these hairs will then catch that vibration and these hairs will transmit this this vibration this will actually open up uh, ion calcium ion cha ion channels and then that will initiate what's called and you guys are familiar with this an action potential from those calcium ions and that gets passed on and now that mechanical energy is being transferred into a neural transmission a neural signal and then that signal gets passed on to your your cochlear nerve okay and that's what I've highlighted right there that's your cochlear nerve so again just to summarize so your oval window your your stapes oval window your perilymph and then that that wave initiates a vibration in the vestibular membrane which then gets passed on to the endolymph and the cochlear duct which then gets passed on to the tectoral membrane and then that tectoral membrane will pass on that vibration by lightly grazing on these on these stereocilii. These are the inner hairs and these are the outer cells, the outer hairs. And then this cilia will then initiate an ion potential, an action potential of calcium ions. And then it 
it changes. This is at this is the point where the where the mechanical wave energy gets switched, changed into a neural signal, okay, an action potential, and then at this point it gets passed on to your cochlear nerve. Okay, now let me back up a little bit. So all this happens in the cochlea, and then again, all those nerve endings come in, and they come in con they uh, converge into what's called the cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight. Now, something that I should mention that um, now, how how is it that you can hear different uh, frequencies of sound, like high pitch, low pitch? So your lower pitch sounds are caught on the uh, on the first aspect, like the first half or so of the cochlea, and as you go down, as you kind of go into the um, into the canal there. Uh, on this part, on the latter side of it, is where you end up with the uh, where your ear catches the higher pitch sounds. So depending your higher frequency sounds. So depending on the frequency of the sound, that's going to uh, dictate which part of the cochlea actually gets initiated, and then your brain is able to process that information and be like, oh, okay, I'm hearing something high or something low. And for those of you musicians, you really have that honed in, where you're able to catch. Uh, the different sounds or the different frequencies of the sounds that you hear. Okay, so again, this is how uh, the sound is created in the ear and the cochlea. Okay, let's jump over now to your equilibrium. So we're taking a look now at the parts of the inner ear that have to do with equilibrium and balance. So there's two parts. Uh, you have the semicircular canals, you have the three here. Okay, so you have the superior the posterior and then the, the lateral, okay? And then just below that you have what's called the vestibule. And the vestibule will lead the, then lead into the cochlea, which we just discussed. And one thing that I want you to notice is that, so again, uh, the, these, these two portions, the semicircular and the vestibule have to do with equilibrium and balance. And all the data that uh, those particular organs get, they go into what's called the vestibular cochlear canal. So at this point, you notice that these these are pretty much innervating the vestibule uh, and the uh, semicircular canals, but this this nerve right here will join with with the cochlear nerve, and these will uh, both combine to make a cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear. Okay, so again, this is for hearing, and then this one has to do with our our balance and our uh, equilibrium. Now, of course, there's a ton of data that goes into um, you know. A, it goes into you being balanced and uh, having a equilibrium through any given activity like basketball, ballet, or what have you. Um, and as you guys well know, uh, the, the human being is capable of um, quite miraculous uh, movements, dynamic movement with flipping and jumping and, and what have you. Even in midair, uh, you can have a sense of body positioning, like if you're d doing a, um, a trick off of a high dive, for example, or you're skydiving. So even with sense deprivation, you're still your body is still able to coordinate for the most part um, uh, as to where it's at and what you can do, what uh, specific body movements you can do. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, uh, the first part I want to jump into is here the vestibule. Uh, so the vestibule has two uh, two portions to it that uh, that we're going to discuss that have to do with um, equilibrium. Now. There's two types of equilibrium that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. So static is, just as the word indicates, static meaning you can be in the position where you're, you're still and you can still, uh, like for example, you can be laying down, sitting down, and your body's still able to determine your body positioning or your head positioning. Uh, whereas dynamic equilibrium is a little bit more involved where uh, we're talking about, you know, you're actually standing up and running around in more of a of a 3D type of motion where you're jumping at different angles. Uh, so, so your stable is kind of more like your, your linear motion, whereas your semicircular canals are dealing with more um, uh, nonlinear, like more dynamic 3D uh, and what have you. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what's inside at, at uh, inside the vestibule here. So just inside the, um, the vestibule, you have two, two, two chambers that deal with uh, that deal with equilibrium. You have what's called the uh, utricle and then the saccule. Now, inside of these chambers, you have what's called macula. Okay, so if you're looking at this one, this is the macula of the utricle, and there's three particular things that we're going to look at. You have what's called otoliths, okay, which are car uh, calcium carbonate crystal uh, crystals that are inside um, a gelatinous fluid. Okay, so this gelatinous fluid uh, does not have a lot of um, mobility if you will just think of a, a cup of gelatin 
you know, compared to a cup of water. If you pour both out, you know, the cup of water will just spill over really quick, whereas the gelatin will, will be a lot more slow moving. And then you have inside of this gelatin, you have these, these hair cells, okay? Now these hair cells are the ones that when you, as this gelatin, as the head moves, the gelatin will move, not the gelatin, <laughs> um, but the gelatinous material will move and the autolits in the gel gelatinous material will move at the same time. And when they move, they will cause these hairs that are embedded inside to move, and then they will cause an action potential uh, that will then go into the vestibular uh, nerve and that go into the, then go into the brain to um, uh, to be processed. So, you know, um, as far as like how you, how you can relate to these um, to this particular type of movement, just imagine yourself uh, in a classroom. Um, where you know you may have dozed off at some point and every and this is all happened to everybody this has happened to everybody at one point or another where you're sitting in a couch or a you know a desk or something and you're dozing off and your head kind of starts to tilt over to the side well as i mentioned th this gelatinous material and the otoliths that are that are inside of it with those two things in combination mixed together uh, it makes that that material actually harder to move but like when your head's tilted down, like you have here, like say it's bent forward and you're and you're dozing off. If you if you lean your head uh, forward or off to the side long enough, that gelatinous material will move with the autoliths, and they will get enough. They will build up enough. Uh, anything that is difficult to move is also difficult to stop moving once it's moved. And so likewise with this material, as it's moving and and the autoliths move, um, and your head's still down gravity at some point will just take over and then and then it'll move a little bit faster and as that stuff moves uh, it will bend the hairs on the inside and it will give you the sensation of actually falling so you could be sitting down just completely secure and, and fine but because of because of the position of your head and you not being conscious of it conscious of it um, as, as those hairs are are manipulated this way they will send an action potential into that vestibular nerve and then your brain it's going to trick your brain into thinking that you're actually falling uh, because that that's the position of the head that it would be if it was falling and then and then what happens you know, like i said we've all been there before where you know you all of a sudden snap out of it and you and you just jump and you brace yourself you grab onto your desk or the couch or somebody next to you because you felt like you were falling and you wake up and you're embarrassed and and then life goes on right uh, so, so that's kind of what's going on at that point with the um, with the vestibule and the uh, the macula that's uh, inside the utricle. Now, the second part that I've mentioned before was the semicircular canal. So you have three semicircular canals, and just embedded at the bed uh, at the base of each of these semicircular canals, you have what's called uh, crista ampullaris. Okay, in that crista ampullaris, you have a couple of things that you need to know. It's the cupola which is this gelatinous material. And then of course you have the cells and then you have the, uh, the hair cells. And then in between these hair cells, you have supporting cells also. Now you remember these supporting cells. You also saw those uh, in, your, uh, in the organ of Corti with hearing, right? And those cells just support, uh, support the, those neurons. And likewise, with the, like the other ones, as this gelatinous material is, is manipulated, like if you're jumping around, flipping, uh, doing backflips or doing whatever you're doing, uh, that material moves engaging these hairs on the inside and they move also sending action potentials so so at this point the mechanical movement that your body's doing that energy is transferred into the cupula and then into the hairs and then the hairs at this point will transfer that energy into an action potential and then that action potential will go to the vestibular nerve and again back to the brain for processing and then you continue on playing like and you, and you, and you never ever really give this a second thought your body is doing such complicated orchestrated movements and again all of this stuff is uh, in in um, working at the same time as all the proprio receptors that are embedded uh, all the all the nervous tissue that's embedded in the muscular tissue and the tendons so your body is doing all these incredibly complicated uh, complicated calculations of of body movements and you know um, if, if something gets overstra uh, overstrained or stretched then you know it all shuts down and stops and uh, you might fall down and start limping or, or whatever just to prevent an injury um, and I talked about that and we talked a little bit more about that in the muscular uh, chapter but um, so this is more of the nervous aspect of it so uh, I believe that does it so that does it for the more advanced look at the inner ear looking at the um, 
looking at the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. So this, coupled with the previous lecture that I posted with the uh, inner ear, uh, make sure that you are you familiarize yourself with all this information that's that's in there. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, listening, and uh, I wish you good luck in your studying and stay safe out there.